Welcome back. This is By the Book, and we're your married relationship coaches. I'm Sent. I'm Sil. And today we're talking about Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 6. We're going to talk a little bit about Cameron and Claire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help but to mock how he says Claire because it's funny <laughs> to me. Anyway, guys, um, we didn't get a chance to do a video last week on Cameron and Claire, although we were really, really trying. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to hop into a subject my husband and I were kind of debating about episode five, and then we can move on to a little bit of what happened in episode six. So in episode five, we mm -hmm. saw Cameron and Claire have a conversation about, I guess, their respective careers or jobs or career paths, whatever the case may be. And my husband and I ran into a debate in terms of this because of the perception of what happened in that discussion. So if you guys will remember, uh, Cameron asked Claire in just a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you know, so you're still in school, right? Or something to that effect. And then he immediately followed it up and he's like, not that that's a bad thing. Just, you know, you're still in school. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And she went on to say that, yeah, she was finishing her master's degree. And what was it? Uh, she, I don't think she said it. She, I think she said the field, but I don't remember right off the top yeah. of my head. Uh -huh. well, oh, maybe it was counseling. Isn't she a counselor? She's, She's a therapist. therapist. Yeah. Okay. So it's probably that. Um, and I don't think that we really took any offense to it. And, you know, it just kind of kept going with the conversation. Yeah. So she followed up by inquiring about his career, which is bicycle fix fixing repair um so she asked so you fix bikes right yeah, and i should have let my husband deliver it because the way that he delivers it is with so much extra added shade can you say please how how she said her question to cameron well first of all my wife is mouthing the conversation correctly but without the emphasis on where they probably should be because I, this is how I remember it. I remember mm -hmm. him saying, "Well, you're still in school, right?" And she and and she says, "Yes, I'm getting my master's." Oh, very good. Okay, all right. So then she follows right back up with, mm -hmm. "So you fix bikes, right?" You know. So in other words, I'm progressing, and you're still doing this hands-on blue collar, you know, like type thing. In other words, I'm kind of job shaming you right about now because, you know, I'm white collar, you're blue collar, and don't you really want to, don't you want a real job, you know? So what's, 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 the, what's this whole thing with you fixing bikes? Y'all let me know if y'all heard all that did. conversation. I heard it. It was, it was, it was, it was all implied. It and, was and, and just how she <laughs> delivered it. <laughs> and that's the debate, guys, in essence, that my husband and I were having is was she job shaming him? And do men just implicitly read into questions about their careers as if shade is being cast onto it? Because I feel like that happens a lot. I don't think that maybe in certain elite careers, the men will necessarily immediately take uh, offense or, or get defensive. Uh -huh. But I think if it's anything aside from, you know, the most elite top tier positions, men are inclined to feel very defensive, like, oh, but I, I make money doing it or I'm satisfied mm -hmm. with my job, you know, and I really didn't read that she was trying to shame him. I think we have to remember they don't know each other. They don't know anything about one another's careers, job satisfaction, um, any direction that they may be trying to go. And I think it's more than fair to inquire at this point in their brand new marriage about those things. Well, I think it is very fair to inquire because they don't know each other and they're filling each other out. However, I th you said something very good. In here, you said that men feel a certain way when they're asked about their careers or their job choices. Yeah. Okay, where does that 
come from? Is it just all in a man's head or is it derived from something? The reason why a man would feel a little... Wait, 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 I'm going to let you answer <laughs> Uh, but it's just like, but it, where, where would it come from? Is it just all in a man's head? Uh-huh. They just feel insecure all of a sudden and all within themselves that they feel insecure about their job choice? Or is it because they have been kind of like programmed to feel a certain way about it? Because a lot of times there are women who are looking, of course, they can look for whatever they want. They can, they can, they can decide on what's right for them. Six figure incomes and things of that sort. I've watched some of these dating shows on youtube okay and i see a lot of the women really the really they want they they want a high value man and how they determine what's a high value man is his income right off the rip and so is a are these men feeling let's just say inadequate all by themselves yes because no <laughs> They are because she can't. Okay, this is my issue with that. When can she ask the question? If these are legitimate, which you agree to, if these are legitimate questions that are fair to want to know the answers to, that are fair to ask, Mm -hmm. do you like your job? Are you going to stay there? Do you see yourself there for the next five years, 10 years? Do you retire from there? Is there a pension from there? These are valid things that a spouse would want to know, not just the woman to the man, but also the man to the woman. Why not? And if you for whatever reason you want to say, have a natural defensive reaction to those questions, then I can never ask them. So I think that in one of your terms, you like to use a lot, men need to get out of their feelings in this process and (laughs) just deal with what's actually being said rather than reading all of what you just read into that situation that was not said. If she's going to throw shade, mm-hmm. at least wait for her to do it. Okay. Are you done? I'm Hello? done. All right. Because she kind of did. Because she followed up with the whole thing about him not being ambitious enough. Because she went on in her little thing and she talked about, oh, so you just wait for good things to happen to you, even though you don't deserve it. And all of this stuff. She went through her whole like little spiel. They, these were two the separate conversation. conversations. That was the same conversation. It wasn't. He's going to have to watch it back. Because we've seen an episode since that episode. So I think okay. it's kind of tainted the memory. Uh-huh. But those were two entirely separate situations. Oh, even if it was two separate conversations, then it was still permeating within her mind that he is inadequate as far as his job choice for her. She wouldn't. I don't think she would have chosen, uh, as she put it, a bicycle fixer. Uh, for her own personal mate. I just don't. I think you're reading a lot into it. So anyway, guys, I, I take it to you all because me and my <laughs> husband could go over this debate over and over again. And I want to know your opinion on that. She did have a lot of questions, but I feel like they were fair questions. I don't feel like she judged or condemned him based upon the answers. I just think that she wanted to know, like, what is to this? Yeah. I don't know anything about bicycle repair and for all we know it could be a very lucrative position particularly as he said where they live there's a lot of people who rely on bikes as their sole transportation or their needs of entertainment Mm -hmm. so maybe he has huge clientele I mean maybe he does but I know he had he felt that he had to defend it because it's like what you were just saying because he's a man no not because she did something wrong yeah I mean come on the man did she do something wrong y'all the man compared bicycle fixing to To surgery that that is in his own personal mind that he has to be that defensive that was outrageous (laughs) come on Dr. Cameron (laughs) as per usual guys baby break anyway we're gonna move on to this week's episode um episode six where we kind of see cameron and um claire Mm -hmm. having fun together it was a nice moment to see them in the like little glow room with the black lights Mm -hmm. and all the paint splashing so i was curious do you think that she still feels 
like she doesn't like him because of his job or is she beyond that? You know, did the fun times that they had, they had a little bit of boat experience. I know she talked to the girls about, um, I guess not feeling the best of looking at them and how they interact with their husbands yeah. and feeling like there wasn't so much of that like natural affection or attraction and she would like to get there. So where do you feel like things stand? I, I think uh, uh, that could have been a catalyst to put their relationship on a, on a better stable ground. Mm -hmm. uh, they definitely enjoyed themselves in that little paint uh, thing. Uh, <laughs> it looked like Cameron was taking out a little bit of his frustration out on her to be throwing he, away yeah, the, he way put he was, the way he was throwing that paint. paint on. You know? And <laughs> I, I thought think, she was going to get mad. Yeah, me too. But <laughs> I think uh, she took it in stride. Yeah. And I think they both had a really, really, really good time uh, in that particular activity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and moving forward, I think it gave him kind of like the vehicle, especially Cameron, to be able to open up his vocabulary and his communication a little bit more effectively. Yeah, I like seeing him try since he said he's not really a great communicator. Mm -hmm. And then he came back later and said he thought he was a good communicator, but experiencing her is showing him, you know, where he's he's lacking, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that was a good moment to see. I think maybe Cameron is redeeming himself with me just a little bit because I definitely did not start off a fan of his. Mm -hmm. um, but I think not in the job situation, but there's some truth to what you were saying about that conversation that they were having where uh, she was asking him, do you think things just come to you? Mm -hmm. Because I think that that really made her nervous about where their values align. Mm. more so than like his job his career path I think she's just like whoa like we are on two different planes here mm -hmm. you know like she feels like you have to push and strive and get you know what you want and he feels like hey well I just had to be there mm. so I was I was worried actually that that, that in and of itself was going to be off putting enough to her for her to be like okay we're not aligned mm. but I don't know. I, I mean, I think for Cameron, if they can get close enough to be intimate, then he'll be satisfied because he leads with that, right? Like you can tell if nobody else ever in life had physical touch as their love language, I think Cameron does. It definitely does. And, you know, it may work as far as, I guess, girlfriend, boyfriend type right stuff. Mm -hmm. But to really get to know your spouse, your wife on a on the level that you really need to have. Yes, physical is a part hey of guys, it, but one more baby break. All right, so you were about to jump in. I was saying how Cameron um, leads with his, the physical. Yeah, of course, by which a lot of men do. And so, uh, with that being said, it may work for boyfriend, girlfriend, but on the level of a spouse, on the level of marriage, you got to be able to talk. You got to yeah. be able to communicate. You got to let her know who you are as a person. Your, your your principles, your values, where you stand as a man. You, you and she's only gonna, she, <laughs> yeah, and she's <laughs> only gonna get that, and you begin to communicate effective communication. Mm -hmm. And I believe he kind of like started that with the compliments and yeah. everything that he was giving her, and letting her know where he's coming from, what's in his head, what his intentions are, and that's what it's all about, man. Be able to talk, but I think he's doing it to try to get to the physical. You know, yeah. And to me, it seemed like that's his goal. Let's let me talk to you so I can get to the physical with you. And you know, I just think it should be the mindset of we need to talk, we need to communicate, so we can have a strong foundation of as a couple, and then we're able to move forward with physical or whatever we're mm -hmm. gonna, we're going to move forward with. But as a couple, as a unit, and so I think if he's thinking of it. Of as, as a means to an end. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me just be that I can get to it that way. Then I think, you know, it's a bit fleeting to me. Yeah, but I mean, they're married, right? So, I mean, it's not like he's going to hit it and quit it. You know what I mean? So, what make you think he's not well, going to hit it and quit it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In theory, he's not going yeah, to. Yeah, okay. So, I, I don't know. But I'm curious what you guys think. I still don't sense great chemistry between them. And I don't know if it's coming. Um... I don't know if it's required for their chemistry to be great for their marriage to work, but it certainly would help. Mm -hmm. um, it's better. I see improvement. I see hope. I feel like if they say yes at decision day, it will be a big turnaround. True. But um, I don't know.
don't know. I just, I sense that there's something else coming on the horizon that's not going to be great. Yeah. So that, that's just me. That's my theory. I I don't get warm and fuzzies with this couple. Yeah. But to be honest with you, not many other couples this year or last year and the year before that <laughs> do I have warm and fuzzies with. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm hoping the best. I really am. Someone commented that we were kind of negative, but we can only tell you what we see, you know? And so if we see some positive, we'll share the positive and we can yeah. hope for the best. But we live in a place called reality at the end of the day. I mean, I usually hope for the couples. It's very mm -hmm. rare that I'm like, ooh, I hope they say no, yeah. you know, at the very beginning until I see that, like, someone is toxic or something like of that. Of course. Then I'm like, oh, no, you need to say no. Run, girl. But <laughs> <laughs> this isn't that situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just don't think that, like most of these couples, that they're they're very well matched. Anyway, guys, as you can tell, the baby is about to start. Yeah. So we were wrapping it up anyway. Please like, share, and subscribe. Drop your comments below. We would love to hear from you, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.